What's up guys, uh, Nate from Famous Racing Customs here, um, was going through, been getting your guys' comments all day long, um, while I was at work, I really do appreciate it guys, um, <clears throat> I'm glad you guys all, uh, like the finished product of the Nova, um, to me it's kind of a little bit nostalgic, I guess, just reminds me of being a kid, you know, it's what I love to do. Um, also going through and I had a couple questions from, um, one of my subscribers, uh, Nixon66. Um, the first one, he was asking, um, how I do my black washes. And, um, it really depends on... Um, I use paint for my black washes, um, and it depends on the type of paint, um, but pretty much it's the same technique, just different wave done. Um, so start with acrylics, um, and just use it, uh, use your imagination. Um, this is my water cup for, uh, cause acrylics are water based and that's what you clean your brushes with. Is uh, water and um, I, I like using acrylics more than um, enamels. Um, their the acrylics are much easier on your brushes um, and easier to clean off uh, if you make a mistake um, or spill a little bit of it or you know whatever. Um, so, anyways, if you imagine that the cup has water in it. I would take my brush and uh, I would have my paint, you know, wherever. But uh, I would sharply just dip, uh, not the whole, don't try to submerge the whole thing. Um, just sharply hit it, hit the tip with the, with the water. Um, uh, and, well, with the brushes I use, sorry. Um, I guess uh, I guess I should get a little bit more into um, uh, the type of brushes. Most uh, most of your paint kits come with these um, full synthetic brushes. I don't like using them. Um, sometimes the, they are. Sometimes they can be uh, nice if you can get the right amount of paint, um, the bristles on the synthetics are just stiff enough where you can kind of pick um, your details out. Uh, me, I prefer to use a natural or a um, synthetic blend, which is um, both natural and synthetic fibers, but it's uh, the natural brushes are, um, I don't know what they're really made out of, um, but they are a much softer tip, as you can see right there. This is a, a synthetic, um, blended brush, so the outside bristles that you see there, and then in the middle there's a, uh, hard synthetic brush, so it gives it that spring back. Um, so these are the type of brushes I like using, um, the natural fibers, um, will, when you sharply dip, will soak up the, enough water that you need. Um, and then what I'll do is I will barely touch the tip, um, into the paint. And, um, I'll get just a little bit, uh, on the tip, a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush. I'll usually let it sit for a second like this and let the water draw the paint back into the brush and um, and then what I do is I just I brush it along um, if it's a little thick it's it can be okay um, too thin is a bad thing so you don't want it too thin um, you don't want it too thick uh, it's something that um, basically I would practice on um, something scrap um, so I would paint whatever it is, grill, whatever, we'll just say a grill, so I'll paint the grill in, well, let me grab the Nova real quick, so, okay guys,
Okay. Um. So, in this situation, what I would do is I would just paint the grill in very carefully, not to not to get any uh, paint on what I don't want to have any color on. Um, and then usually I just I'll let it dry. I'll let it fully dry, whether it takes 15 minutes, an hour, or whatever. Um, I'll let it fully dry in there. And then uh, with the acrylic paints, it's really easy. You can pretty much just take um, like a, a paper towel, we'll say, um, and your finger and lightly just brush it against the uh, raised edges and uh, all that, um, all the, the paint that's on the outer edges because it's very thin will just mostly wipe off. Now you may need to take a toothpick to get into the uh, corners. Um, sorry this lights not cooperating but you may need to get a toothpick to get down in the corners and you know get it all uh, scraped off um, <clears throat> so that's how I use with the acrylics now with the enamels what I will do is I will uh, basically it's the same thing let's just say this is a thing of thinner um, and since I use black um, when I do the black washes, um, it's okay. I have a couple different thinners. I have a thinner, um, I have my clean thinner that I use to refill. It's a big bottle. It's about, you know, whatever, that big. Um, and I will refill my little bottles with it. Um, so I have a brand new thing of clean thinner. I usually have a used thinner and then uh, that I use to uh, to clean my brushes and then I have like a thinner that has been used um, so much that um, like it's literally has changed color um, and I don't mind using those two I don't like using my clean thinner because you're going back and forth dipping dipping painting dipping dipping painting um, so, but it's something that you kind of have to practice, and I mean, I can explain how to how I do it. It works for me. It may not work for you, so you have to go out there and practice. But basically, it's the same principle, only not sharp, because if you splash thinner and you're anywhere near anything that's painted, a painted surface, which um, you guys have seen when I do my updates you'll see like the bodies up over here and you know something's over there when I'm working on in the middle um, I don't move that stuff the stuff is right there uh, I I don't mind working around um, especially something like this my, my finished body was sitting there and it's it's a motivator for me so I will have the body just sitting there I won't have it tucked away somewhere being safe um, I know it's not the smartest move on my part, but it's what I do. Um, but anyways, you would slowly, just the tip, dip it in the thinner, and then dip it in the paint, um, just the tip, let it sit for a second, let, let the thinner draw the paint back and the fibers, the thinner uh, and the fibers just draw the paint to the back of the brush. Um, it, do, it doesn't have to make it all the way to to uh, the very back edge where the metal is but let it drop back for a minute and then paint over it and you can see it usually takes me two three different coats to get it uh, the way I want it but um, that's that's how I uh, do my black washes I use paint um, there are products out there um, if you can check out um, the one I know for sure that probably uses them, um, well not probably, the one I know for sure that uses um, uh, actual washes um, is Dr. Cranky. I know that one for sure. I don't know anybody else. I don't think anybody else has really explained it. But Dr. Cranky, uh, actually there's bottles of already pre diluted wash and all you do is you stick your paintbrush in and you go and that you know if you want to go out and uh, spend the money on that stuff then you know more power to you um, I don't have that kind of money to go out and just uh, 
friv I'm not going to say frivolously spend, but I just don't have the money to spend on supplies like that yet. Um, I mean, I'm barely getting my brushes and my tools together. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, they, they do make products out there that are already pre-washed. They have blacks, grays, whites, blues, you know, whatever. You can wa you can do a wash in any color. It's already pre-diluted. You know, you can go. And you can do it that way with any paint color, too. Just like the, the already prepared bottles of wash. You can um, take just whatever colors you want and you can do washes. Um, I've, uh, at one time or another, I tinted my glass. Like, um... We'll just say if I wanted to do um, a blue headlight, blue headlights, you know, um, I would take my blue. Uh, acrylic, again, works the best because it doesn't damage. If you don't like it, it doesn't damage the clear plastic where um, enamel and thinner will fog it. Um, but on the inside, I would paint uh, my blue wash and make it as even as possible, let it dry, leave it alone, glue it in place. So, um, there you go. There's the uh, washes. Um, as for the, the name of the future, um, I have it right here. Um, it's actually Pledge Floor Care. Um, they make two different kinds like this, and it's with the Future Shine. Um, you can pick this up at Walmart, um, I'm pretty sure a grocery store, anywhere that sells stuff for floor care. Um, to, uh, um, I picked up the tile and vinyl floor finish. I think the original, when, every, when it uh, was starting to come out there and being used as a clear coat, I think, it, I don't, not 100% for sure, but I think it was only for like wood floors. Um, and it just said future across the label, but they've changed the bottle up. Um, so it's pledged floor care, uh, with future shine. And, um, I think I paid, I, I think maybe five bucks for it. And I use it straight out of this bottle. I pull the cap off. Um, there's a couple different, um, ways you can do this. Um, the way I do it uh, is only because I don't um, I don't have an airbrush, but um, the way I do it is I take a uh, I have a a broad paintbrush. I mean, it's literally like almost half the size of this roof. Um, unfortunately, for this car, I couldn't find it, so I used a used a smaller one, and so it it didn't come out um, the way I wanted it to. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying. I do have a brush that's about, like, half the width of this roof. Um, and I just dip it and just paint it on. It self-levels. Um, you let it dry. Um, you know, you just paint, uh, just paint over your whole car. Um, after you've painted the body... Um, not like not when it's finished when you have the glass in it although you can uh, people use it to make their glass uh, crystal clear um, I don't think I've really ever had a problem with my glass uh, not being clear enough for me but some guys are out there and um, it's not clear enough for them so they dip it and let it dry there's a few different videos out there on different uses for future um, but for me, I use it mainly just for clear coats and for stuff like my wheels, um, keeping the, uh, the chrome from chipping. Um, but you paint it on, let it dry half hour. I usually let it sit 45 minutes to an hour. And then you take a, uh, a used dryer sheet. It doesn't matter what brand. It just, uh, make sure it's used and then you quickly just buff it out quickly buff it out and then if you want to add another coat you can um, you just got to be careful on how thick your coats are um, because unfortunately it will yellow if you use too much um, but you can do 
five, six thin coats. Don't use too much. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, buff buff it in between each coat. So, I mean, if you're gonna do like this right here, um, has got three coats on it. So that's a coat. Let it dry for an hour. Buff it. A coat. Let it dry for an hour. Buff it. A coat. Let it dry for an hour. Buff it. So, um, yeah. The other way is it is very thin. As you can see here, it's. About as thin as water. Um, Dr. Cranky has uh, a video out there um, that he uses it in an airbrush. So some guys airbrush it, some guys hand brush it. Um, I don't have an airbrush, so I hand brush. Um, and this is, I mean, awesome stuff. Ask uh, anybody who has used it before. I mean, there are clear coats that people would rather use but in a pinch low on cash I mean I've clear coated just about every single model I have I even clear coated my big rig with that and that's all that I used so I have enough clear coat there to last me eons um, I will probably I could probably retire from model building long before that's done so, um, but it's not just for that. There's, there's a guy out there. I mean, he's found, he's found a ton of uses just for future. He's got a glue. He uses a glue, he uses that as glue, clear coats, um, to make his glass crystal clear, uh, to make his chrome, I mean, blamed out. Um, and uh, that works for him. So. Um, I haven't, I have personally haven't tried dipping my glass. I, I just brushed on, just brushed on my chrome. Um, so I haven't, you know, I haven't really tried a whole lot out there, but there are videos out there, um, that show, um, uh, they have tripods and their cameras are set up but me I record off my phone I don't have a tripod I don't I mean I don't have I don't have stuff like that for it uh, my videos um, as of yet um, but you know so I can't get like a view uh, where I'm recording a video and I'm working on my model and I'm explaining as I going along I I do it I show you and then I go uh, I stop the video, go back to work, I show you again. Um, so that best I can do is just explanations. And the reason why I didn't type out the explanations is because I speak better than I type. So, um, but I've kind of gone off pace here, I think, a little bit. Um, so, uh, Nixon 66, uh, I hope that helps. Um, any of these guys are more than willing to lend a hand, give some advice. You know, um, I'm certainly not a professional at this. There's guys that have been using Future a lot longer than I have. There's guys that have been using washes a lot longer than I have. Um, there's guys that have been out there building a lot longer than I have. Um, I, I appreciate that you, you asking. Um, and I see here that I'm reading... Um, you're trying your wet sanding for the first time. So let me give you a little tip on that. Um, invest. Invest your money um, into things like these. Um, you can pick these up at a hobby shop. I think I paid six or eight bucks for these. Um, and they're, they're sanding buffing pads. And I'm missing one, but you know, 36, 4,006, 8, 12,000. This, you know, and I've cut mine off because these are way too big to use on anything. So, um, and they're foam. Oh, there's two stuck together. That's why I'm missing one. Haha. -ha. Okay, 
So, and then there's 32. But they're foam. Um, and you can wet sand with them. Um, I would do like... Um, Oh, actually, again, I would go check out Dr. Cranky's, um, Dr. Cranky's, uh, uh, channel. He, he goes through uh, his process, and I kind of, uh, don't really, uh, it's all pretty much the same process. He uses, like, a thousand grit, um, 1500, 2000, 2500, then he gets up into the, but he uses all that, bef I think, before he even lays down paint. Those are for his primer coats, and then when he gets in the paints, he starts using the 30, 3200, 36, you know, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 12,000, or I think he even goes even further than 12,000. Um, and I can't even say for sure exactly how he does it. Um, I, um, I've, I've, I think I've watched his video once or twice, just to kind of get the gist of it. Um, Dr. Cranky is very helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you can email him <clears throat> or person PM him, I should say. Leave a comment on any of his videos. Um, sometimes it may take him a minute to get back to you, but if he's got, if he's able to help you in any way, he's the one to do it. Um, another, you know, uh, scale car models. Big Boonski, uh, Redneck 7381, um, you know, uh, Dave Parker, Scale Model Customs, um, I haven't seen too much from Fast Jimmy 71, um, but I think he's working, so, um, Bowtie Bad Boy 33, um, that kid does some amazing paint jobs, um, Atomic Dog 32, uh, he can help you out as much as he can. He's a box stock guy, um, and he does do cars, but he's more into airplanes. But we still let him hang around. So, <laughs> uh, I kid. Um, no, Atomic Dog 32, he's a really good guy. Um, I'll, everybody um, that I know of. Uh, anybody that I've uh, subscribed to, um, anybody, like I said, that I know of, that I have subscribed to, that have subscribed to me, um, I not ever had what I would call a real negative comment. Um, people post their opinions. Hey, you know what? They're not knocking me. They're just saying what they would you know how they would have done it that's fine with me that's that's just constructive criticism um, I don't think I have any dislikes any video dislikes uh, that I know of um, uh, one guy I wasn't subscribed to him I don't know if he was subscribed to me um, but Joe Thompson did a uh, a reply video and it was just basically showing off his work. Yeah. Go check his stuff out. He's got some pretty cool stuff. Um, he's got a Ghostbusters themed rig with uh, the Ecto-1 on a trailer. Um, I think it's kind of badass. So, um, But yeah, this has kind of been a uh, long, long and drawn out, um, fairly boring video. <laughs> um, but, uh, I'll, I'll just go through bad medicine, um, redneck 7381, uh, this is off of my, my last, uh, finally it's done video, so, uh, let me just start over again, uh, bad medicine, redneck 7381, I love poker guy, big, big boonski, bruh, uh, the the geo doctor cl uh what is that gardio sorry guys uh if i if i don't pronounce it right it i i don't mean to um lines uh hot rods paul rhodes dr cranky 
uh, Model Mine 72, uh, Muscle Car Lo Muscle Car Lover 11, Scale Car Models, another good good guy. Uh, Nixon 66 and Rambler 69. Thank you guys for your kind words and your uh, uplifting uh, comments. Um, it, like I said, you know, I, I get into a rough spot and you know I do something and you guys give me nothing but positive feedback, and I can't thank you guys enough. You know, um, Dave Parker, you've always given me some positive feedback too. Uh, don't know where you've been. You don't do too many videos. I'm guessing you're working pretty hard these days. Um, so, uh, but, you know, you guys out there, you guys make this community what it is, you know, um, Big Boss Gym, uh, Scale Auto Customizer, man, there's so many of you guys out there that, that, I mean, I think I got like 150, I, ha I have 152 subscribers and I like, every time I turn around and I do a new video, I got another subscriber, another subscriber, another subscriber. It's hard to keep up and, and uh, name everybody. So if I forgot anybody, please, please don't be offended. Um, I mean, that's a lot of people to try to remember. So, um... But like I said, you guys, you guys make uh, make this fun for me. Um, so um, I guess with that, again, Nixon six six. I hope this helped. I know I rambled on. I know uh, it's going to be a somewhat boring video, but um, it's a little bit of a rant with an explanation. Um, I have some work that I did a video last night it never uploaded I don't know why um, but I did some work on the 67 GTO uh, the AMT kit that I hate um, I cut the doors off or cut the doors out uh, cut the trunk out of it um, if you guys have any ideas pitch in my way man I, I'm, I don't know what to do with that thing um, so uh they're cleanly cut they're good to go i just uh i gotta figure out how to do hinges um so that's more like my practice vehicle because i i don't like that kit at all so um so uh, it's a good kit to practice on because if i screw up oh well i'll make it into a junker if i screw it up but um, just kind of trying to get some insight from you guys. What, what do you guys think I should do? I was thinking about doing uh, one of those toothless zombie hunter Dr. Cranky cars, but um, I don't have like I don't have like guns and missiles and and stuff like that. So and I know it doesn't have to have that to be a toothless zombie hunter or whatever. Um, but I don't know. You guys, give me some ideas. Uh, you know, I'm always open to them. Um, you know, whatever works. Um, uh, again, I'm going to open up, uh, I guess, um, uh, another side note. Um, again, uh, I guess I'm going to open up the polls to you guys. I did this a while ago with the Pete and my tow truck. Uh, my 77 wrecker, which I still have not done a final video on. Holy crap, I forgot about that. I'll do that next. Um, but uh, I left it to you guys to decide whether it was going to be the Pete or the 77 wrecker that gets built next. So I'm going to do that again. I'm opening up the polls here. Um, I have uh, the 55 cameo raised up. And nasty looking muddy truck um the uh 75 i think it's 75 whatever the uh duster funny car um i have uh the camaro which has been sitting there neglected 
Um, and I have the bike, the uh, chopper. So, um, is there anything else that I have around here that isn't built? Um, no, that's, that's about it. So, there you go. So you have 55 cameo. The Duster funny car. The new Camaro. And the chopper. So you have four to choose from. You guys are determining the fate of my models. Which is the next to be finished. So, you guys did such a great job. And, um, of course, I must show it again. Because you guys ins uh, are an inspiration. But, there is the Pete. Still in all of its glory. You know, and for as long as it's been sitting up there, it is still quite clean. I have not even taken the time to uh, clean off any of my models yet. Um, I don't know. Uh, you really can't tell on that one. But, there you go. There's dust. Dust everywhere. So, I'm thinking that's it. Yeah, because then I have the... Uh, I have the goat. What else do I have in there? Let's see. Oh, I guess I have the double dragster. Still needs to be done. Oh. And. My pirate ship that fell. Way down there. The box fell. I hope nothing broke. I haven't had a chance to get behind there and get it. So I also have the pirate ship. So there you go. Uh, cameo. Duster, Camaro, Chopper, Pirate Ship. You guys decide. This has now been a 30 minute video. I don't think I've done a 30 minute video in months. So, um, I'm going to upload this to my computer. And then I'm going to upload it to uh, YouTube. So, uh, as always, this is uh, Nate from saying... Uh, from This is Nate from Famous Racing Customs. Signing off. What's up, guys? Uh, as promised in the last video, um, I said I would do a final video on the 77 Wrecker. It's been done for months. Um, I think I mentioned that once, and I just never got around to making the uh, final video for it. Um, again, this is one that <clears throat> a kit that I was not impressed with. Um, I know a few of you guys are out there kit bashing um, with the uh, the Snowplow GMC. Um, so this one I, I turned into a curbside kit, just gave it a custom paint job, no real frills. Um, I, I ended up giving it to my father-in-law. So uh, it sits on his shelf, that's fine with me, He he likes it so and I'm cool with that so um, but here it is it's got the uh, same color as on cranky head um, with the uh, I believe that's the olive flat wheels um, I went ahead and picked the um, the uh, lug nuts. Um, I also drilled out these wheels. Um, wasn't really happy when this thing even came together. So I didn't even bother. Um, I had it mocked up and was looking at it and just decided that whatever. Um, it's already a curbside kit so I'm not going to worry about um, making the leaf springs or anything like that. These dents are ridiculous. Um, and nothing real serious uh, interior wise. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's it's not one that I'm really impressed with. Uh, as you can see, I did nothing with the underneath. It's a curbside kit, so it just sits there. 
um, it's never going to be shown so uh, wasted a front end but that's okay I don't think I like that front end anyway I think that's off the uh, might be the 56 Delray it has to be the 56 Delray because the 56 Nomad has that front and rear end on it um, so yeah that's that's pretty much it guys uh, no real frills um, I didn't even take the time to clear coat it, um, as you can see there. So, paint didn't come out the best either. So, um, it's kind of a cool scheme, very 80s-ish, maybe mid-late 70s-ish. So, but, yeah, there you go. As promised, guys, um, I got my movie maker working, so, um, as of right now, I'm going to bash these two together and make one video. Um, let's see how well this comes out. Hopefully, it doesn't. It's not too big that um, I still got to get Format Factory and Squared Five. But I mean, at least uh, Movie Maker's a start. I can start editing my edit editing my videos again. So, anyways, guys, uh, like I said, um, there it is. Yay! Woohoo! Really, that thing really was a pain in the ass. I'm really big. Boonskis looks way better than mine. So, um, so there you go. Uh, so that's it. Nate Famous Racing Customs uh, signing off. Children of the beast embrace, to scorn and hate the human race, consume the light that hugs the earth, and aid the womb in giving birth, to a group that will appear, and guide you through this final year, the dark armies then will come.